We're back. Um, yesterday, you've seen us first fix the electrics. Um, there was a bit of uproar last night about the electrics, but please get an electrician in if you are not qualified, as it can kill. And electricians often don't like to sign off other people's work. So consult an electrician if you're going to do your own electrics or get somebody in to do your electrics either way. Right, today, what we're going to do today, it's dropped again the temperature. It was supposed to be about seven degrees this week, but it's not. It's dropped again. We're about one degree today, so it's too cold to bond the rubber on the roof. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean the roof off. I'm going to get the rubber over the top and then we're going to protect it again just so it's sat on there, relaxed, ready to go as soon as we get a dry morning. They're also going to fully put the vapour barrier on all the walls and then they're going to plasterboard as well. We've put these patrasses in. Basically, a patras is a piece of wood behind the plasterboard which will allow fixings. So there's a heater going there. We, we know from experience that that's enough patrasses that will carry the heater. That cut out there is for the fuse socket because we don't want any wood behind when we're putting our plasterboard back box in and we are using plasterboard back boxes. So like I say, it's just a bit of flooring. It's screwed and spiked through the sides there so it's solid, it's not going nowhere. So when that's plasterboarded over, we can put our heater straight on there and we know there's a good fixing. Likewise, we've done the same over here. This is where the consumer unit's gonna go. Two purposes there for the consumer unit. Um, what we do might be a little tip for you. We've stuck a tape measure on there like that. We've took a picture of that. So when it's plasterboarded, we know where that timber is because when we put our consumer unit on there, the little punch outs at the back, we don't want the punch out there because we're gonna have to drill through that and it's pain in the ass. But like I say, patras there, patras there. If there was a TV, we'd put a patras in as well, but there isn't a TV on this one, so we won't put a patras in. Um, so we're gonna get plasterboarded and we're going to get the rubber on the roof and we will get the underside, the soffits done as well, but we can't do the fascias because I've still got to fix the plastic down to the roof. Right, um, we've we took the visqueen off the roof. We put two layers of visqueen on to keep the roof dry, which it has done. The glue didn't go off the other day if you watched, uh, but now it obviously has, it's been two days. So what we're going to use, we're going to use a multi-tool to get the glue off. We're going to get the roof nice and smooth. I don't know if Adam can see them little burrs there. Can you, can you just see them, Adam? No, yeah, no. So what we're going to do, we're going to get all the burrs off and make sure the roof is flat and there's nothing sticking up. Any nails that are proud, we'll drive them home, make sure they're all down. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put the rubber on the roof and just leave it there ready to go. And then what we're going to do, then we're going to put the visqueen back over the top. So when we come on the morning, the roof's ready to glue down straight away. And what we'll do, we'll look for a dry day and a slightly warmer day before we can do it, which is in the next couple of days. Right, little note I just want to tell you about. Somebody called me a gypsy. Um, he says, is it just me or is he a gypsy? And all these people that work with him have just come out of prison or something like that. Um, I don't know where you're coming from with that one, mate. And you also said that, look at him trying to... Uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Look at him try to review tools like somebody else on. Well, the thing is, I'm not affiliated with anybody. I've got no ties with any tool company whatsoever. We use Makita simply because I've got loads of Makita batteries and that's why we're using Makita. I'll tell you the truth about tools. I'll tell you the truth that Pazload, we can't use Pazload in this weather because the gas freezes and it's crap for that. But apart from that, it's fantastic all year. You know, somebody who's sponsored by Pazload would not tell you that, but that is the truth. So anyway, that's the thing. I'm not a gypsy. There's nothing wrong with gypsies even if I were a gypsy. Um, and none of the guys have just come out of prison either. Not this week anyway. Right, so we're gonna use this Makita multi-tool. It's brand new, straight out of the box. It's a DTM51. It's got a five amp battery, they're brand new as well. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this big cutting blade on it and I'm gonna scrape the glue off. Like that, and I'll go around them with some sandpaper and rub it down and make sure it's all smooth and ready for the rubber. Then what we'll do, we'll put the rubber on and we'll get it protected again, because what I want, I want it to keep it dry, so when we come to do it, I can roll it back and it's not wet. So that's what we're gonna do today. Right, what we're gonna do now is gonna get this rubber. Um, there's probably maybe 60 kilos in this piece of rubber. It's quite, it's, I mean, it's relatively heavy, but it's the fact that it just wants to flop everywhere that makes it difficult when you're getting it up. So what we'll try and do is get up on his shoulder and then get up the step ladders to get it on the roof. So there's the rubber up. Um, there's no right or wrong way to have it up. It does have some writing on, but the writing tends to be both sides sometimes. Like I said, there's no right way up to it. Um, what I prefer to do though, can you see the factory crease in it there? I prefer that crease to be pointing down to the roof. Um, it's just a little bit easier to get out that way. 
See what I'm doing now, I'm just getting the rubber, I'm going to put it on the roof into the position it's going to be in and then it will relax a little bit. Obviously it's not going to relax that much because it's so cold today. But what we'll do then, we'll get the visqueen back over it and get it covered up and protected and then it'll just sit there waiting to get glued until we've got the right spot in the weather and the temperature. Right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do the roof. We're gonna rubber the roof because the weather's really bad tomorrow and the day after and the forecast some snow and that. So this glue, I don't know if you can zoom in on that, Adam. Can you see um, application there? It says use only when temperatures will not fall below freezing at any 48 hours. So we've got two days for it not to fall below freezing, but um, it's not freezing at the moment. It's about four degrees now. It's gone up a little bit today. So what we're going to do, we're going to glue the roof down, then we're going to get some 100 mil insulation, put it on top so the frost can't get to it, and then we're going to put the visqueen on top of that and clamp it all down to the roof and leave it a couple of days, which should do the job. We did it all last year and it was absolutely fine, so we're going to go again this year. So what you want to do, I've put the rubber down, it's been down about an hour now. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to just roll it back can actually feel the heat of the sun on this now, which is good, which is what we want. Um, obviously, with it being black, it soaks up the heat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to roll it back like that first, and then I'm going to fold that in half, keeping hold of that. And then we should be able to then just roll it very much like you would roll up a carpet if you had a dead body in it, I suppose. Right, so what we're going to do now is, there you go, so it's rolling now, lovely. Adam, walk back there. We'll roll it back halfway because what we're going to do, we're going to glue this half of the roof first and then we'll do exactly the same on the other side as well. Um, so what we'll do, we'll glue a strip that wide, then we'll roll the rubber over that, brush the bubbles out and then we'll work our way along. Then we'll jump onto this side, roll the rubber back until we see the glue line again and then work our way that way as well. <laughs> What I've done there, um, I've just blown off any crap that's under the rubber. Um, the guys that I get from Northern Building Plastics and the guys there, they roll it out on the floor in the warehouse and picks up bits of crap off the floor, which we don't want under the rubber. Uh, just for your information and all, this is the thinner grade rubber, not the thicker one. Um, I, I don't know why you'd want to use the thicker one. I mean, it's only 0.2 of a mil thicker anyway, but this is the one we use. And we're going to use this water-based adhesive. We don't use the contact adhesive around the edge. Uh, the reason for that being is I can't actually see the point of contact adhesive. A rep rang me up one time and he says, I asked him how much contact adhesive was and he says, well, why do you even need it? But he's right because... You know, you've got your water based, and what they're saying is to leave a 100 mil strip, which you do your contact adhesive. So if you do that, then you, obviously it's stopping the wind from pulling it up, but obviously we're going to put a curb trim on it, so the rubber's going to go over there like that. The curb trim will then go on there and be mechanically fixed to there, which will hold the rubber down there, so you don't actually need the contact adhesive, in my opinion, anyway. That's it. So there you go, we're just using a normal emulsion roller to roll it out. Um, you don't want no big globules, you want it nice and spread, um, evenly spread, a good application with roller. Like I say, we're not leaving the 100 mil around the edges for the contact adhesive because I just cannot see the point in it whatsoever. Um, in my mind it serves no purpose. And that rep, like I say, he advised me that he didn't need it either. So Adam will do that. What I'll do then, I'll get a soft brush, this soft sweeping brush there. And what I will do is, I'll just brush the rubber like that. And then I'll, I will then apply hard pressure on it to get rid of any air bubbles that, have, um, that are trapped there. Right, so we've, we've got the rubber down on this side of the roof. So what we've, we've rolled that side back now and we're doing the same again with the glue. We're applying the glue, we're letting it tack off a touch and then we're going to push the rubber over the top of that. We're using a soft brush like that. What you need to do then is put a lot of pressure on it and brush the creases and the bubbles out of the roof if there's any bubbles at all. Um, you can see some of these creases, it's where it's been folded when it's been manufactured and I, I tried with the heat gun to get them out and it, it don't, so it is what it is. Doesn't affect the quality of the roof. And I know I'm going to get all them people, I've been roofing for 40 years, I've been roofing for 60 years. Uh, you shouldn't be doing it in this temperature. It says minus, we did it all last year, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to put some Kingspan over the top of it. What's up?
I'm going to put some king <laughs> put some king span over the top of it, and then strap it all down with some visqueen, and leave it for a couple of days, and that will be absolutely fine. Right, and the rubber's bonded down. What we're going to do now, we're going to put this 100mm insulation over the top of it. So if you think about the roof on the inside, we've got 100mm insulation, we've got our OSB free, we've then got our bonded rubber, and then 100mm sandwiched on top of that. So the roof itself is sandwiched between 200mm of insulation, which will keep it well above freezing anyway. It's not, it's not going to be cold enough to affect the glue. So we'll leave that on for a couple of days now. Um, and what will we do then, Adam? We'll leave that on for a couple of days and then we'll take it off and we'll get those fascias and soffits on because we've got two bad days of weather coming, um, snow and ice, I believe. Right, so he's putting the first fix back boxes in, plastic back boxes, they're Appleby brand um, from Tool Station. I think they might be a pound or something like that, 80 feet, like that. We'll pop the back out there like that and that's where we'll drill through, through the insulation at the back of the wall. So we are done now. The bottle lapper now, the plaster is going to come in tomorrow. That's why we've protected the AstroTurf with some bisqueen and some boards. Obviously, we don't want wet plaster on the AstroTurf. Um, so it's all been boarded, it's been vapor wrapped. You've seen us insulate, you've seen me insulate the ceiling, you've seen us first fix electrics. And if you get a qualified electrician in, if you're not competent to do your electrics, we've put our back boxes in for our sockets, our few spurs, our Cat 6, our light switch. So the plaster will come in now, he'll tape it all up and then he'll put a skim on it and that will take, a, well in this temperature it'll take a few days to go off. We've also put the rubber on the roof, we've insulated the top of the roof to keep the rubber from freezing because um, we've got some forecast of some cold weather the next couple of days. So that's it now for this one for a little bit, just while the plaster gets in um, and there's a, a lag, a little bit of a delay on doors and windows which there is all around the rest of the country as well. So. Thanks for watching and um, tomorrow might possibly have every single person on one job so it might be interesting to watch that as well. Thank you.